Hello everyone and welcome to the Simply Colorful Fibercast. Today's date is September 21st, 2018. My name is Lynn Marquardt and I'm your host. Thanks for joining me. We have an hour of creating together, usually fiber related, but whatever you want to do, let's just see what we can accomplish together in 60 minutes. Welcome. As you all know, we are on our third clue of our brown bag mystery quilt. This is a mystery designed specifically for our patrons and I'm going to hold you a little bit in suspense before I show you the finished block we're going to make. If you want to participate in this mystery quilt, go to www.patreon.com slash simply colorful. P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash simply colorful. Mary O'Connell, if you're out there and you need the link, I'd be happy to send it to you. Okay. So I have so much to catch you up on, including pictures from Down Under from Peggy and a card from the Netherlands and a recap of what we did at the quilt show last week, along with tales of a refrigerator, a, a refrigerator from 1993. I have a tale about that. So grab your project and let's get started. Clue number three. First, it says we're doing more applique this week. Ruh row. So either Misty is excited about this or she's dreading another week of applique or any of you. So I have a few answers, Misty, on, well, I could get to it right now. You asked about the M and how to do the satin stitch because we did machine applique, how to go down to the M and get it so that it's nice and pointy. It takes practice. I definitely would recommend using some scrap fabric and it's just all about how you bring your, your zigzag down, put your needle down in the right place and then pivot the M and then start it up again. And it's, it's just practice. I don't think I know anything more other than that, but I'll keep that in mind if I do think of any more tips. Okay, so last week we did the, the letters and Sue, if you're out there, yes, it does spell simply. I was only joshing with you that it didn't. Sorry, I didn't mean to make you think a second thought. Um, oh, Chris Myers, hello. Hello, I hope you had a good week. Oh, I'm so glad you're out there. Um, so let's get started with our applique. Needle turn applique. We're going to make, four. Chris says, happy, Ma happy, Chris Myers, I was gonna say. She says, happy Friday. I wonder if Jean's out there because you're already winning, Chris. Okay, we're gonna make four blocks that are ultimately will end up being 10 inches by 10 inches. So cut from color C, 10 and a half inches by 10 and a half inches. Cut four of them. That's step number one. So we did that. Easy peasy so far, right? Then we have to make our flower templates. And on the clue, Page number, oh, Jean says she's there. Hi, Jean. Uh-oh. Um, I love this. Oh, Jean, you need validation. We're here for you. You're amazing. Uh, let's see, page number, page number five has what we need next. And when I say in the clue, templates A through G, these are they. So we, we need to create, we're making four flower blocks. And I know, well, I should just show you what we're making. I've held you in suspense long enough. We want to make four of those. Okay? Okay. So in order to do that, go to your template page and cut out four of these big circles, four of each piece from your scraps. So let's pull out the scraps. And put these aside. And this is where you can use any scraps or you may have, a few of you may have bought specific colors. That's good too. You can do the same or different. I think I'm gonna make my four flowers exactly the same. And if I had to pick, I would suggest trying to do the same, but it's really up to you. It'll look beautiful either way. So here is 
one color of my scrap, my orange, and then my pink is another color, and then my green for my flowers. So you'll see, I don't even have my sewing machine here. Today we're just going to, what I wanna show you is how to get all of your applique pieces cut out and adhered to this fabric so that then you can do your hand sewing. And we have a trick that we're going to use our plastic with to do that. And it works really well. I learned it from Ann Barnes many years ago when I was over, I was probably working at in Milford at Joanne's and I met her there. And then we had, a, what were they called? The Batty, Batty Quilters maybe? We had a quilting group over in Milford. Jenny Radloff was there. Um, a Maria from Maria Sews a Lot was there. Cecilia Doyle was there. So funny, we all worked at Joanne's probably 20 years ago now. And uh, this is where I learned needle turn applique from Ann Barnes. Okay, so first off, so here's the next piece. Once we have our templates, there are different ways you can use your template. You can just rip this out and cut around and use your paper as templates. And then, so I'll show you. Like if you wanted to just use your paper, this has quarter of an inch seam allowance. For me, that's too much. I like about in between a quarter and an eighth of an inch. So I should know what that is. Um, if two eighths is a quarter, then four sixteenths is a quarter. So I like three sixteenths. Is that right, Jean? You better ask Chris. <laughs> okay, so there's an example of cutting it out. And then, and then what you would do if you're using just the paper method is go to a piece of fabric. Um, I do right side. and do a loose drawing around it, or better still, actually, we're gonna use my method, which is using freezer paper, but let's, let's assume we don't have freezer paper, which oftentimes we don't. Here you have the leaf. I'm gonna actually cut it on the sewing line, and I'm just, <coughs> excuse me, I'm gonna sneeze. That's not good pod. Okay. Let's see. So let's cut out on the line. So I'm taking back how I do it. You can do this in so many different ways. Now I have cut out the line. Now I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm going to draw right on the top of my fabric. Actually, maybe I'll use a friction pen just for this. Demo. Let's see if that'll if you can see it better. Okay, so there I've I've drawn the leaf. Now what I do? Hello everyone! Oh, I'm psyched that you're out there. Now I'm cutting about between an eighth and a quarter however many sixteenths that is. There we go. Now I'm ready to use that piece. That's one way. We're gonna, another way is take a piece of plastic, like pretend this plastic here, put it over whatever you want to create, like let's say, I don't know if this friction pen will work, but let's try it. I'm plastic, it doesn't seem to. Hang on. Maybe this will work. No. If I had my Sharpie right here, a Sharpie would work. So use your Sharpie and you draw on the plastic and then you would go and you would cut it out 
And same thing, you would use it like the paper, you draw it on this and you'd cut it out, okay? That's the second method. The third method and the one that I like, and because I had some freezer paper on hand, thanks to Sarah Kokanowski. Sarah, if you're out there, I hope you're doing well. Out in, I think you're in Arizona right now. Sarah's our friend who took to the road with her escape. She's the wild thing. These are my eight and a half by 11 pieces of freezer paper. And freezer paper is that paper that you wrap up venison with or any game or anything that you want to put in the freezer. One side has wax on it and the other side is, is paper. And the wax keeps things fresher longer. But the beauty is the wax, when you iron it down, will stick on your fabric and it'll stick multiple times. And because these are eight and a half by 11, you can put them through the printer. So pull out your clue, get to page five and literally print your templates onto the freezer paper. And then, I'm so glad I have this on hand. I highly recommend getting this, by the way. I should put that on my website, Simply Colorful. I should do that. Then what happens, and I've already done them and I'm gonna use them again, is I printed them out on freezer paper and I cut them out. And the back here is waxy. And I have all of my seven pieces. I need seven pieces for each flower, okay? So then what I do is, so let's, we're gonna use that though, that's one. For this, I have three more of these flowers to do. So let's get my iron ready. My freezer paper ready. Give yourself, make sure you have enough for the, um, the seam allowance that, that you're gonna turn under. What we're gonna do is ultimately turn under the edges with our needles, right? So while that's heating up, I heard a lot of dings. Who's out there? Happy Friday. Aw. So we know Chris is out there. We know Jean is out there. Oh, who's this? Oh, look at this. Hey, I forgot mommy's there. Can you see who that is? That's KB and my mother. Where are they? Aw, nice to see you. Have a great time, Mom. Okay. And then Carol. Hi, Carol. Carol says, hi, Linda. <laughs> Carol says, hi, Lynn, and members of the Chris Fan Club. <laughs> I want to be the president. Hope you had a good week. Finished a quilt top this week. Oh my goodness. It should be off to the long arm division this week, travel permitting. Oh, Chris, 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 she says. Happy sewing everyone from Carol O. Oh, thank you, Carol. Carol's, as you remember, Carol's quilt was here last week behind me. Speaking of which, did you notice the quilt that I have behind me now? Do you know it's the O baby baby pattern that we did a few mysteries ago and it was been done by Joyce Morganelli and I love it. I love it and I own it now and I just love it. So you will see that again. Um, but I, I bought it at the quilt show last week. Huh. Okay, so now we're gonna take your iron and check this out. That template that we cut, cut out and printed out on the freezer paper sticks. And so literally this is a good way to not even have to do any. Aw, Chris says much love to Carol. Ah. Amen. Uh-oh, Jean's reaching out to Carol just as we speak. Ah! Karen says, showing the love for Jean, 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 Jean. For those of you who may not know this, 
in the past, there have been games amongst viewers of how many times I say their names. That's what this is about. So I love it. Fall is here. We're back to playing games. So when you see this, you're going to say, wow, that's not very precise, and it isn't. So I left myself some, some things around. So what I'm going to do now, and I forgot this, I'm actually going to use my friction pen because the heat will turn it, will get rid of it. I've had good luck with the friction pens. I don't have any horror stories. I have seen horror stories online about the heat not taking it out. But for me, it's worked fine. And let's be honest, I'm not a, I'm not entering my quilts in competitions. So it's not like, look at that. So much, it's more precise this way. While we're at it, why don't we do two more? Or, no, no, we don't have time. So you can decide to do all four at once or do them one at a time. So there's that. Let's do the next round circle I'm doing in this light pink. Okay. And it gets pretty hot. You can let it um, cool off. Probably a good idea. While we're letting that cool off, let's do some leaves. I have some of this green left that has plenty of room. So I only need to do two leaves, right? So there we go. So I'm going to pull out my friction pen. It has a funny up and down on and off switch. This would be perfect for our overhead camera. I know we talk about it. Oh, Kathleen, welcome. I wanted to say hi and thank you for becoming a supporter. I sent your brown bag and I ordered those purple t-shirts. So stay tuned. Catherine ran our quilt show that was really the best yet, best ever. It's amazing what a group of people can learn over years. Um, I was just so proud. I think Chris Meyer said it best. It was just a, a good showing of everyone's uh, work and how they've progressed over the years. I mean, we had an amazing Harry Potter quilt that Carrie did that I got to see several months ago. I did the binding on it for her and she swore, she made me swear not to show anyone. Um, but then we had Karen Swich's anniversary quilt that her she did for her parents 60th. There were all of the modern minimalist quilts that Kelsey Ullman has become famous for and her style. We had oh, an amazing maze maize quilt that Jean did. We saw some quilting that Chris did on a quilt that we must have done 10 plus years ago for the church. That was fun to see. It was nice to see that that quilt hadn't really faded that much, had it? It was looking good. Okay, so now can you see this? We have the flower. We have three petals. Like I say, the beauty of the paper is all the wax doesn't get lost and you can use it again. So there's my center. Okay, those we can throw away. We need some Kona punch, baby. Talk about needing a little piece. Probably got two yards here. 
And I have to tell you, if you get to, and by the way, you can do this flower machine, machine quilting. I can see Sue Norton doing it by machine all day long and it will look beautiful, many of you. So here's my little, what I was gonna say is this little inside um, part of the flower has a lot of fussy turns. Feel free to turn that into just a circle. In fact, that would make it more modern and I think it, it would look kind of cool. I'm, I'm gonna go with the little curvy, but it is, it's fussy. So there's that. And then we'll do the stem and then we'll go on to the next step. Actually, after I do the stem, I want to go and find those pictures that Peggy sent and a few others. I can't remember. You aren't going to believe it. I'm working on a Downton Abbey quilt. In fact, I'll post a picture of it. Um, it's a customer quilt. It's from BJ out in Yellowstone and it's beautiful. So this is just classic. What did I have? Two yards of that punch Kona cotton? And I've literally, because I didn't, heaven forbid I used too much of it, I'm cutting out in the salvage where there are the big dots in it. I doubt you can even see that, but right in here, the big dots. I'm going to make it work, but really, I couldn't have moved it over a quarter of an inch, huh? Okay. And there that is. Okay, so there's that. Now let's do... This should, I hope, fit this way. Yeah, it does. Just barely. Okay. Isn't it nice to just create? Okay. So on this one, see what I did? I just cut a piece of green and now I folded under. Oh, duh. I have to iron it so that then I know how much to turn under. See? Now when you turn it under, you just turn it as far as the paper piece. And I'm trimming it to an eighth of an inch because the stem is really not all that big. And you can finger press it at first. And then I'm also trimming this side off. It's just too, a little bit too thick. I first did applique, oh, it was one of the first quilts I ever made oh, for my sister, her wedding quilt. And I can remember vividly going with my mother over to Walpole, or maybe at first I didn't bring her with me, but eventually I did. And I bought all of the material there. And I think, ironically, I think it might have been similar to these colors. It was the one with the hearts and the swans on the muslin background. And I can't imagine I quilted it. I bet mom ended up hand quilting it, helping me hand quilt it. Okay. So there's that. And then we can just pull this off and that's ready to go too. Okay. Next step, so we just talked about three ways to cut out 
your pieces for your flower. And just as an overview, right, the flower is going to go. And I'm going to show you how to position it just right so that all four of your blocks look the same. But it'll be something like that, right? Okay. The next step is we have to thread your needle with a very bright, different color. I think I have a dark green here. There we go. It's even quilting thread that one of our dogs bit. That's how old this one is. Oh, speaking of old, the refrigerator went bye-bye today. Mass Save came and picked it up. And I was, it was, I was doing the math and realized it was a refrigerator I bought in 1993. It was an Amana and I bought it all by myself for my first house, and that thing has lasted until now. Isn't that something? Or actually, about a year ago, more than a year ago. So we had an extra refrigerator kicking around for more than a year. That's embarrassing. Ah. Anyway, called Mass Save, answered online the questionnaire. They have an appliance recycling. I think I first thought of this when Chris was using Mass Save for some insulation, some energy efficiency audits and things. And I thought that's a great idea. So anyway, recycled that. This morning, Bob and I, in, this, in the beautiful fall air, cleaned it. Oh, we had to plug it in. So it was on our front porch, plugged in, and we cleaned it. Yes, I did use a, um, a hose. It was disgusting because it had been closed for all that time. Oh. <laughs> so Chris just sent a funny that took me a while to get, but now that I got it, it's pretty darn funny. She said, if it had been an, a, a woman, -a, it would have lasted longer. Amen. But for an Amana, oh, that's right. I get it. So an Awomana would have lasted longer. You're right. Well, the Amana that they, it left today and I was happy for about five minutes. You want to know why? Well, first let me back up. So I don't know if anyone else has encountered this, but Mass Save, it's a wonderful program, right? I don't, it's, government funded and who know, lots of subcontractors help execute it. I got more phone calls in the last two weeks confirming that they were going to be here today. And they were always from different numbers. And so I always thought it was junk, a junk caller. They called again this afternoon. So they said they'd be here between 12.15 and 4.15. I just wanted to, I'm going to stop my story. Here's what you want to do. We're basting each piece so that it's ready to applique. So do that while I tell the rest of my story. So here is this cooling refrigerator now clean on the front porch today. And I called them at about 1215 and said, where are you? And they said, well, we have a window. We're not going to be there right at 1215. It could be 1215 to 415. Okay, that made sense. So of course, I'm stuck here, which is fine. I had to work anyway. Um, sure enough, quarter to four, I get another what I think is a junk phone call. And luckily, I didn't hang up. It turned out that it was the people that were going to come pick up the refrigerator. And they said, okay, we're going to come. We'll be there in 10 minutes. I could heart. He did not speak English very well. 10 minutes later, or now maybe half an hour later, a big white truck shows up. And I'm so excited. I go running down. And by the time I get down there, they're backed into the front driveway. And there are two of them. And they're getting their dolly out and they come and they check the refrigerator and everything was fine. Actually, this all went very smoothly. One of them asked to go to the bathroom. Of course, I didn't know them from anyone. So that was a little hairy, but 
if he had to go to the bathroom, he had to go to the bathroom. So anyway, I brought him in to go to the bathroom. They take the refrigerator. I literally wave it goodbye. I take a picture. I tell them, oh, I've had that refrigerator since 1993, yada, yada, yada. They can't wait to get out of there. I'm thinking, well, it is Friday afternoon after all. They leave. I immediately go inside and I finish up my work. So now it's about 430. A friend of mine was going walking at 430. We've gotten into this really good thing where I've discovered if I walk and talk to someone, it makes me not think about how far I'm having to walk. So, so the plan was I'd, I'd head out, she'd head out, and I'd call her. I head out to the front, kind of psyched to solve the problem. I get rid of my refrigerator. I'm walking out to the end of the driveway. I look to my right. The mailbox is completely knocked over and knocked over and there are big track marks from the white truck that goes right by the mailbox and pushes it over. So I got rid of my, my old refrigerator, but now I need a new mailbox. So story doesn't end there. I did call mass save. I took a picture first. So I even have a timestamp not five minutes in between. And I know, you know, you know, whenever you see something like that, I always second guess myself and I think, well, maybe they didn't do it. Maybe another car came by or maybe the wind blew it over <laughs> or, or a raccoon went on top of it or whatever it is. But I knew this was them. The, the, the tracks are just so fresh and um, you, it was a big truck. <laughs> so I called mass safe while I'm walking delayed the time I could talk to my friend because I had to deal with this. They put me back toward the resolution desk. Mass Save apparently has a resolution desk for issues just like this. Well, they had gone home early, so I left a message and the saga will continue next week. So we may have gotten rid of our refrigerator and maybe, who knows, what will happen Bob saw it right away when he came home and he said, not a problem, we can, we'll fix that. <laughs> that was a long story. Let me, you can see what I'm doing. I'm just continuing to baste these. I actually like the, this basting process. Because what you're kind of doing while you're basting it is you're kind of finger pressing the, what you're going to applique. Aren't you curious what this quilt's gonna look like? We've had some variety. There's my third leaf. Before I go any further, I just want to show you a picture that Peggy sent. Let's go look at that really quickly. Hey, Sue Norton. Let's go to Sue first though. Oh my goodness gracious. Sue says, oh, and she sent, she titled it She Shed. This is kind of quilt related. My She Shed got its own barn quilt. Still working clue two of mystery quilt, but we'll be done tomorrow and then we'll start clue three. Look at this. Sue, that is lovely. I can't believe how fast you pulled that together. You have a very strong team out there. Oh, I love your, your barn quilt. That's wonderful. Oh, keep us posted. Oh. And I'm glad you're working on the clues. That's wonderful. So let me find. Oh, Jean. Jean and her Dresden, the Dresden quilt. I looked for some more and more um, um, traditional designs for the Dresden. And we should be good to go whenever you're ready. Okay. Oh, and Karen Kaczynski, your brown bag and your t-shirt are on their way. Here we go. Again, I welcome Kathleen. Where is, hey, Colleen Riley, hello. 
I wanted to say hi to you. Thanks for your note. Peggy, look at this. Peggy writes this. So this was last Saturday. She says, from Pe Peggy, quilt to show you. Good morning, Lynn. I enjoyed Fibercast this weekend. I wanted to show you a quilt I made for my grandson and the back. Now, Peggy, we've known since the very beginning of this Fibercast. So we're going on five years. She's down in Australia, and she's notorious for, and I know her, for doing both the front and the back in scrappy uh, piecing. So she almost does two quilts in one. So she sent me a picture. She said, I did think of you when making this, that you might be interested because of the detail. Yes, I do. So there's the front. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? And it all is held together with their colors. And then look at the back, her snowballs. It's amazing. It's like a two for one. Oh. And it's all done. So you you did, and I bet those pieces are very small, Peggy. Thank you for sharing that. So glad you're out there. So glad to know you're all out there. Misty. Okay, so Misty says, she's watching and learning. I've done a few things of applique, but get frustrated with the curves. So the word simply will give me practice. I hope so. And I don't want it to be frustrating. So if you like paper piecing, you saw my sister, or you might have seen, she did paper piecing. And I think it worked okay for her. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, the good news is all of us are going to do do these letters in a way that is consistent across every letter. So if you tend to make all of your letters slanted one way, they're going to be consistent because they're all going to be slanted that way. Or if you tend to make your S's not as curvy as you might like, all of your things aren't going to be curvy. Your P won't be quite as curvy. And so it's going to look fine. It's going to look consistent. So keep on hanging in there and keep sending questions if you have them. Oh, wait. Okay. So let's see who's out there, aside from Jean and, and Carol and Chris and my mom and KB and all of you. Allie from Australia. Hi. Morning, Lynn, she says. In Australia, we cannot get the same Fraser paper as the States. Oh, that's interesting. She says some fabric stores sell it by the meter and it's very expensive. Oh, but I buy one or two rolls of Reynolds freezer paper when we visit the States. It lasts me years. That is a great tip. That Here's the only possible problem with that because I also have, and it's out of reach here, I have the same thing, that freezer paper, Reynolds freezer paper is phenomenal. You can't easily put it through the printer, but you're right. That is a great tip. So in your grocer's aisle, right next to the plastic bags is Reynolds uh, freezer paper. Great tips. She says, we can buy a wax lunch wrap that will work, but, only, but one only gets one use out of it, whereas the Reynolds one can be used over and over. Great tip. Thank you. Allie also says, yesterday I made my first chicken pin cushion with two orphan blocks. So easy, she said. Oh, wonderful. Today, I'm going to sandwich a lap quilt for my sister. I made the top some 10 years ago, so it's about time I finished it, especially as we're going on a country music cruise in 16 days. Oh, how fun. Oh, have a great weekend, Lynn, and all the fiber casters. And she says, P.S., I love my friction pens. Use them a lot and never had a problem. Well, there you go. There's two of us. Thank you, Allie. Happy Saturday morning. Annie, out in Sioux Falls. Annie says, we've had storms and rain all week. Autumn has hit with a vengeance. Yes, it has. She says, it looks like you're having fun. I am. She says, I'm not doing anything at all tonight. We are getting over colds and don't feel energetic. It's nice to watch you, though. Oh, I'm sorry you're not feeling well. Drink lots of fluids and rest. That's perfect. Uh, this morning, she says, I dyed wool, so I haven't been totally unproductive today. No, that's amazing. She says, I also finished through D11 on Dear Jane this week. I'm planning on doing a different yellow fabric for each block, and I will soon run out of yellows. Uh-oh, trip to the store. I have gotten all that Joanne has and all that Walmart and Hobby Lobby have, so it will have to hit the quilt shops next. 
When I run out of yellow, I will have to work on something else. Ooh, 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 ooh. I tell you, Sue, Annie's going to beat all of us on her dear Jane. She says, have a great weekend, everybody. Oh, and I'm downloading. I forgot to be downloading. Oh, look at this. I love yellow. That's great. That is D8. DD's delight. Oh, another stunner. This is D11 Snow Crystal. Such talent. Look at that. Oh, thank you for sending that. That's great. Okay, let's go back. So get back to this so we can talk about the next step, which is really, I find really works quite well. I'm still continuing to baste. And then I'm going to show you how to use plastic to line up all your applique pieces. So this one gets big bastes. Probably don't even need to do this. Although I need to do the end. Made my trip to my airfare to New York City in the middle of October. I have to go there for a technology forum. And then I made reservations to go to Tampa at the end of October. Do you know I can get down and back to Tampa? So from Massachusetts to Tampa, Florida for under $200 right now. And then I can stay somewhere. The hotel's a little pricey in, in downtown Tampa. But compared to New York City, I can go back and forth to Tampa many times before I stay in New York City for just staying there two nights. Hotels are very expensive there. So that was good. That felt good. Okay, so continue to just keep basting things, all your pieces, on these little pieces where there are tight curves. I clip them. And then just with my finger, I think in the clue I showed it with the big the big floret. You just fold under. These stitches are pretty small. And I have to tell you, the first one over here that I applicate on is not very good. You can see a lot of my stitches. It's just so small and finicky. But to whomever said that, I don't know if it was Annie, I am having fun. I am feeling the promise of fall. I've been walking every day this week. I don't, it's not humid like it has been. I'm just so relieved not to have the humidity. So no more complaining. Oh, and I sold a doll last weekend at the show unexpectedly that was a treat we had a wonderful woman stop by and the doll reminded her of her childhood it was a tilde oh this is not looking good but that's okay get the idea. It'll be really rough. There's that one. What are we doing here? Yep. Okay. We're okay. This one's easy, the round ones. You're just doing a running stitch all the way around it. So what else? I 
I know the world news is always, there's always something going on. Cruises, a country cruise alley, that sounds really fun. Uh, okay, so there's that. And you'll notice I don't even knot it. It's just another one. And now we'll do this one, and then I'll show you my trick again that I learned from Ann Barnes. You can use upholstery fabric, flat the upholstery plastic. If say you're doing what I'm going to show you, you can do on a long vine border. That upholstery fat plastic works great because you can cut a big piece of it. And I'll show you what I mean in a minute. We're actually going to draw what we're going to applique the design on the plastic. And then that will be used to guide us on where to put our pieces. And so what I like about this, the method I'm gonna show you is, you don't have to draw the flower on your back piece of fabric. So it's very clean. You know how sometimes when you look at applique, you can see the pencil marks? On this one, providing our friction pen works, which I have no doubt it will, you won't see any, any pencil lines or anything like that. Okay. Down in Texas, Patty, I don't know if you're down there or if you're up in Pennsylvania with your friends, I, with your family. There were, there, you were getting doused with rain down that way. And then, of course, things are still above level where Florence came in, down in South Carolina, North Carolina. Ugh. Things back up here. If you remember last week, did we talk about the, yeah, we did, the gas mains up here in a few towns north of us, the pressure was too high and it, several houses exploded and caught fire. And uh, what we've heard is Eversource, I think Eversource, another energy company has come in and help is helping manage the the recoup, I was going to say recuperation, but you know, fixing everything. And most people I think are back in their houses, but some of them don't have any hot water. They, I heard maybe the National Guard was going to drop off hot plates and heaters where it was safe to do so. But of course they don't have any of the gas turned on and some of them have, I think most of them have electricity now. The good news is we haven't heard any catastrophes yet. So fingers crossed that they're getting humanitarian relief because people are good. At the end of the day, we're all here just to help each other. Speaking of which, and speaking of humanitarians extraordinaire, Sandra, how are you feeling? You still have that shiner? Hopefully by now it's gone down a little. Okay, so you can see this is something you can do in front of the TV. You don't have to have, you don't have to be in your studio or have a lot of room. And this is why I actually put this clue up front. Now I'm telling you something about the rest of the clues. I put this clue purposely up front so you have time to work on it, just so you know. Okay, so now we have all seven pieces for our flower, right? In fact, the first step is to just baste these three pieces together. And this is very, oh, no, let's back up. So the next step is to go to pages six and six and seven 
and print out the full block size and then cut it out and tape it together. So there you have a block that is the, the it measures 10 inches by 10 inches. So Leah, thank you for pointing this out. Please make sure it's only 10 inches by 10 inches. So you need your background to be 10 and a half by 10 and a half. This is the finished block size. This becomes, so here's the magic. Now what you wanna do is you've printed this out. Now you wanna take your plastic and you wanna get yourself a good registration mark. For me, because my plastic was eight and a half by 11, I put it up in the left-hand corner and I drew an L. So I knew that's where the plastic was. And I just, with my Sharpie on my plastic, I just drew the flower, okay? So now I have the flower on this. Let's show you. So we have the flower drawn on that, okay. Then what you do, and I've got my registration mark, so I know at the top of, oh, and I, I did include half an inch all around, so at the top of my 10 and a half inch square. Then what you do is pull out your 10 and a half inch square like this. Put this plastic that you've just drawn on Put the left-hand corner up in the left-hand corner. You see that? And now it's as easy as putting your pieces. Actually, what I'm going to do before I put this in is I'm going to put all three of these flowers pieces. I'm just going to base them together. This looks very messy when you're in the midst of making it. But remember, all of these basting stitches come out. Whew, that middle looks terrible. Okay, so there we have the flower. Where do we place it on our yellow? Leave, leave your needle threaded. Lift up your plastic and position your flower underneath it so that it lines up. Okay, make sure the registration works. So then I'm going to take my plastic off, leave my flower there. I've already got my needle and my basting thread, and then just go through all layers of the fabric and baste it right in place. And I go out around the edge here. And keep going all the way around. Try not to move it. Try to keep it as flat as you can. Who knows, maybe people, maybe someone out there will get excited and do a Baltimore album quilt after doing this. In fact, I think Annie and Sue should do a Baltimore album quilt. Ah. Okay, so there's the flower, and we know it's positioned correctly because of that method. Well, now let's say we want to do our stem. How do we know how long to do it? Well, go back and put our plastic on, and then Turn this over. The key on this one I found was to find your bottom point and then just go straight up underneath the middle of the flower. So there is the bottom. 
Oh, and things get staticky. Oops. Okay. So this is really, we're not going to get to finishing this block. What I really wanted to show you was this part. Like I say, it really makes for clean applique because you don't have any pencil marks on the back of your, your backing fabric. And the only, what kind of tips do I have for the applique? When you use a thin thread, some people use silk thread. I've just been using my Aurafil 50. What is this? Yeah, my 50 weight. You could use a 60 if you wanted something even thinner. And then just take tiny stitches. You can do a ladder stitch and hide it that way like you do on the back of quilt bindings. Sometimes I just do a really teeny tiny whip stitch. And you're using your needle. And the smaller the needle, the better. And you're using your needle to just tuck things under as you're going. For me, I did the, the stem first, and then I put the leaves on top. Whatever you want to do is fine. I just say make it consistent on all four of them. You could even do some of each. All right. Now we have three leaves to put on. Okay, there's that. I'm going to leave my needle threaded and just put it right there. Now the question is, where do those leaves go? It doesn't matter which one you do or what order. I don't think. Okay. There's that one. Go inside, put your finger there and hold it there. Oh, and I definitely I'm gonna just Start another piece. I should have done another one of those. So, do you believe clue three? And we've done three different types of things. We did the blue picket fences. I think it was Annie who suggested picket fences. And we did the letters simply. And now this week we're doing our flowers. I wonder what next week will bring. besides apple picking and fall things. There we go. Okay. Let's just, how are we doing? Right, nine o'clock, wow. I'm gonna position the other two and then Make sure that I said hello to everyone, and then we will call it another wonderful Friday. There. And there. That's how you position it, and that's how you make sure that you make identical flowers. So let's see who else is out there. And then I'm going to bid you adieu because we all have accomplished a lot in 60 minutes. Oh, Jean, 
Jean says, be careful using the friction pen on dark fabrics. It can leave a white line. Well, thank you. She says, make sure to test it first. Thank you, Jean. Wow. On a woman. Oh, Chris, you make me laugh. Okay, let's just make sure that we have all the pictures and we've said hi to everyone. Again, thank you all. Thank you to Kawartha Quilting and Sewing up in Canada for your support. If anyone needs any sewing machines, long arms up in Canada, go to Zach and his family up there. Great, great people. Oh, Wendy Alford. She says, hello, Lynn and everyone. I'm away, but thinking about you and Fibercast. Oh, wishing you and everyone a great weekend. Love always, Wendy Down Under. Oh, Wendy. We hope you're having a great time with your family. The pictures look beautiful and your, your messages are inspirational. Thanks for saying hi. Kathleen. Oh, I just wanted you to know I'm here. I'm not a fan of hand applique, so I'll be doing machine. Way to go. She says, I'm falling behind for a while. My husband is not well, and he takes most of my time. I'm trying to come in on Friday night, but it's for relaxing, not sewing. Hugs to you and all my family on Fibercast. Oh, Kathleen, right back at you. I hope that you have just had some peace and quiet and some, some rest. Know that we're here. Do sewing when you feel like it. And do keep, keep checking in, and we're here. And Annie says, just to let you know, you suggested I do a Baltimore album. This is my latest block. I need to count, but I almost have enough for a quilt. <laughs> Annie is our underachiever out there. Not. That's beautiful. Look at you. <laughs> Annie, you crack me up. And that's very uh, Clems and Colors. Anyway, huh. Alicia B, she says, it's Lisa. I'm using my daughter's email account so I can get one. She says, anyone who was planning on coming to your quilt show this past week until my wheel baron decided to let go of my car. Oh, my, aw. It's all fixed now, which is good, but I was looking forward to coming to the show and to finally meet you. Oh, she says, I guess it will have to be another time. Yes, soon. Well, sitting here with my dog, Coco, and we have the house to ourselves. Hubby is at the cabin closing it down for the weekend, and daughter is out with the boyfriend. So I get to do what I want. LOL. I'm finishing up making dolls out of spandex fabric for my daughter-in-laws. They are into Halloween. So I attach one of the dolls that I finished and hoping to get the other one done tonight while Coco and I sit and watch you. Well, I hope you can have somehow meet. It would be awesome. Well, come out to Missouri. Go to the retreat out there. I know it's a long way to, to meet up, but that might be fun in January. Something to think about. If anyone out there wants to go to the retreat, it's um, January 22nd. It's Elvis themed, and we're going to have a ball. And there are still beds available. She says, I do enjoy watching on Friday nights. It's great. Till happy quilting, everyone. Off to finish the doll and 50 other projects. L-M-O-A. Thanks again, Lynn. Oh, and look at this. Oh, she's adorable. And she makes me think of fall. That's a perfect ending to our show. Thank you. And thank you all for being out there, especially Chris and Jean. Have a great weekend, everyone. Do what you love to do, and I'll see you right back here for Clue 4 next Friday night.